Well, hey everyone, welcome back to the cabin. If you're new to this channel, I want to talk to you. If you're a longtime viewer of this channel, I want to talk to you as well about three tips for being off grid. So regardless of whether you're a new viewer or a current viewer, at some point in time, you may decide that you want to take and do what we're doing up here, and that is being off grid. Now, regardless of whether you are way out uh, in the remote wilderness, or you're about uh, 20 miles from town, which is my case right here, or you live even closer to town. There are three things that I think are probably uh, the most basic things that we used when we started up here. So the first need that I want to talk about is the need for power. Now whether you choose to be really off-grid and being very very remote or possibly maybe 20 miles from town like my case right here or maybe even closer I think the basic the most basic need that I had when I first started out here was power. We have built a sawmill we have built an outdoor kitchen. We built our own communications tower. We've built a chicken house. We've got our own hog pen. We've got our own smokehouse. We built this outdoor toilet. We have built our own cabin. And we're also building a new timber frame workshop out of materials such as this from the sawmill. So of course the most important structure on the property of course is where you live, which is being our cabin right here. It took about two years to build. And the most important item that I had that I could use was my generator. I purchased a small generator. A lot of times I would go online and I would find maybe defects in uh, certain pieces of machinery. And I would go ahead and order it hoping that it would run. It's just something that I could fix. Anyway, the generator came in handy. I used all my corded tools and I even, when I came to a job that I didn't have a tool for it, I would purchase it as I went. But I've got everything from air compressors to uh, things that cut, things that sand, things that grind, so on and so forth. So the most important thing that I had at that time was the generator to be able to crank that up, plug in my tools, and be able to build my cabin. Uh, today I've got several battery packs in there that run the lights and the computer and the hard drives and things like that. But I still today am using that same generator. Just got through doing the knee wall on the cabin with mortar and rock that we got from North Carolina and mixed every bit of that. And there was like eight tons of rock and mortar that went on this cabin. So that was probably the most valuable asset that we had. When we first thought about building up here, I contacted the power company and they wanted $10,000 just to set two poles and bring the line from down there in the valley up here and I thought you know that's just too much money I could probably invest that much money in solar plus what I would pay them on a monthly basis um, you know and that that's a lot of money so we thought that we're gonna go solar now we're still working on putting that together because it takes a lot of money to go solar but there are still ways that you can live off-grid without having being hooked up to power so that kind of forced us to start checking into ways that we could develop our own power, which I mentioned about solar uh, and possibly wind energy. And the more we began to dig into that and the more I began to stay up here and work on the homestead, uh, it caused us to dig, like I said, more and more into being as self-sufficient as possible. So we built this outdoor kitchen. We got a nice grill here. We got a rocket stove. I got a pump over there. I've also got a tote sitting out here that I'm going to develop a catchment system where we can have all the water that we need here. So we began to fall in love with the idea of being, like I said, as self-sufficient as possible. Probably the second most important thing that I think that you need is water. Now that might sound silly, but when I first started working out here, I had to carry all my drinking water, and honestly I still do. I purchase all of my drinking water that I make coffee, tea, hot chocolate, you know, just regular drinking water. But for having animals off-grid, the hog, we went ahead and processed her this past fall, took a tremendous amount of water. The chickens take water every day. Just to be able to clean up the dogs, they take uh, quite a bit of water a day, about a gallon a day. So your need to have um, a ways and means to be able to store water on your property just for those simple things right there. That didn't include bathing or doing any watering the garden or anything else. So there's a tremendous need for water that you might not think about when you're building a homestead. This is our raised bed garden in the background. This is the other garden that we have, two hooliculture mounds. But just between those two, they took about 200 gallons of water every two weeks, which I was lucky enough to be able to go to my sister's house and get 
but in order to raise the garden during the dry months we had to water and honestly I watered it every evening before the sun went down. So there are multiple needs for both potable and non-potable water when you're living off grid. The third item that I think was probably the most important which allowed me to be able to build these things around here um, with using the power, the generator that I talked about in the very beginning um, was the fact that I had the need of tools. Now a lot of the tools that I had um, when I first started were very minimal. Um, I'm basically an amateur. I don't know that much about building. So I think the most important thing is to be able to buy the tools to be able to do the job. Now if you're not going to do a whole lot of building like I've done up here, you could probably get away. And I've still got tools that I bought from Harbor Freight. It doesn't have to get expensive, folks, to be able to build something like what we've done up here. I've got a chop saw that I got from Harbor Freight. I've got the uh, cement mixer that I got from Harbor Freight. I've got a router I got from them. I've got a jigsaw. I've got a lot of the corded tools came from Harbor Freight. You can um, build something like this if that's your interest or maybe not this big. Just, you know, maybe you just want a cabin somewhere that you can get away to. Um, you can do it and you don't have to spend a lot of money. So the latest thing that I'm having the most fun with is working with hand tools, doing things the manual labor way. So currently when I'm building you will see me using a lot of these hand tools. I am having the most fun probably building up here than I did using the power tools. Now since then my son has actually replaced all the power tools with cordless tools. But you know what folks? Cordless tools are just a convenience. Power tools can do just the same thing. And they actually, the cordless tools cost a lot more money. But you can pick up items like this that I have bought at the antique store for $7. You can pick up items like this right here. The price tag is still on it, 20 bucks. That's a one inch hand auger. Um, I've got froze and axes and things to sand with, things to, to cut with. Uh, I tell you what folks, you can still arrive and get the same project done with the hand tools and have a whole lot of fun doing it. And I challenge you to try it because I think that you will like it. Because there's just something to be said about manually doing it yourself and the satisfaction that you get in the end knowing that you've done that. Anyway, these are just three tips that I wanted to bring to you. I think that people need power of some sort to be able to do uh, certain things. I think that you need water in order to be able not only to survive but to have your gardens and your animals and to be able to wash up, clean up, have your dogs, so on and so forth. So it's very, very important to have that. And then the thing is also to be able to have tools that you can use in order to build whatever your dream is. Like I said, if it's just a cabin or if it's a whole homestead uh, like we're doing here. So if building like this interests you, you can click up here in the top right hand corner and you can start at the very beginning, I think, when we built that outdoor kitchen. So folks, thanks for watching. We really appreciate it. We look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time.